A common stereotype of Asian immigrants in Western countries is that they value education and force their kids to study hard, get into the best schools, get a uni degree in medicine, law and engineering and all that stuff, and of course have a six-figure job. This includes Chinese people as well, and I'm not sure what it's like in other countries, but here in Australia, Chinese immigrants like living in places that are close to good schools and universities in the hopes that one day their kids can also go to those institutions and study there. So I thought it'd be interesting to explore the cultural origins of this stereotype, which by the way, is real. And I've realised that there have been stories that have been passed down from ancient China to today which emphasise the value of education. Guess what? There is a cool story about this, and today I'm going to share it with you. G'day everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bamboo History Podcast, a podcast that focuses on Chinese and East Asian history. I'm going to keep this episode's opening short, so let's get straight into it. Many of you probably know who Confucius is. He's probably the most famous Chinese philosopher that there ever was. Sorry to any of the butthurt Taoists out there. So famous that Confucius was known as a sage. Then came another philosopher, whose name was Mencius, spelt M-E-N-C-I-U-S, and he was known as the second sage, and was basically the second most famous Confucian philosopher, after Confucius himself. Well, sorry to disappoint all of you, because today's story isn't going to be about Confucius, and it's also not going to be about Mencius either. Today's story is going to be about Mencius's mother. Many kids in China, or ethnic Chinese kids like me who grew up with Chinese parents, would have most likely heard about the story of Mengmu Sanqian, which is translated into English as Mengxius's mother moves three times. Funnily enough, it was actually my mum who told me about this story of Mengxius's mother when I was a kid. It was probably just a way of reminding me that Stephen, I'm your mum, I'm the greatest person in the world, or something. <laughs> Before I go any further, I just wanted to clarify to all the North American listeners, especially the USA peeps, that we Australians, we use the word mum colloquially for mother. Because I know you guys use like mom or something like that with an O rather than a U for mum. So that's why I wanted to clarify it in case you all got confused when I was saying mum. Okay, let's move on. The story begins with the birth of Mengxius in the year 372 BCE, during the Warring States period of China. Mengxius's birth name was Mengke, M-E-N-G-K-E, and Mengxius is just an English way of pronouncing his honorific title, Mengzi, spelt M-E-N-G-Z-I, which literally means Master Meng. When Mengxius was three years old, his dad passed away, so he was raised mainly by his mum, who is referred to as Mengmu, meaning Mengxius's mother in Chinese. I think Mengxius's mother's actual name was, was Nishi, spelt N-I, but I'll refer to her in the episode as Mengmu, or his mum. Women back in those days weren't able to get good paying jobs, because it was a patriarchal society. And there was no social services back then as well, like Centrelink. So raising Mengxius as a single mother was tough, and they barely had any money. Still, Mengmu wanted the best for a son. Initially, both of them lived next to a cemetery, possibly because the house prices near the cemetery were low because of its undesired location. When Mengxius was a kid, he was really curious as a child, and liked to have a look at what was going on in the cemetery. So all of us kids, we're all really curious, right, when we're young, and we like to see what's around us, and we try to copy things around us, because we're, we're like a sponge. And Mengxius was no different from everyone else. Like, when he used to live near the cemetery, he would watch what was happening at the cemetery, and he'd see all the people crying, in and go, oh, this looks cool, I'll, I'll just copy them. And he'd start crying as well, like, he'd copy the mourners, um, who were mourning the dead at the cemetery. Like, <laughs> you know, he'd... he'd 
Yeah, because he's a kid. He's just going to copy what everyone else is going to do, right? And so when Mencius' mother saw that her son was taking an interest into mourning other people, she was so horrified. She's like, what the f... Are you serious, mate? Just, these people have died. Don't copy what they're doing. And frankly, I don't want you being near a cemetery. And I don't want you doing anything, any job related to cemeteries and dead people and all of that. Because it's, I think it's just a Chinese thing that it's a bad omen to, to work with the dead and it's not so desirable. Thus, Mongmu decided to move house. And so they decided to move to the city and settled near a bustling market near the centre of town. The house prices were probably a bit higher, but they were going to cop it. Because they meant that, you know, if they had to pay extra, because she thought as long as her son would not get exposed to things that would negatively influence his life, then it was worth it, you know, just to pay a little extra. But this time, they moved near the markets, and Mengxius stopped, <laughs> and, and Mengxius, little kid, he started copying the people at the markets. You know, let's imagine we're at the fruit store or the fruit market, and or you see the people out there trying to sell fruits, like, hey, two dollar, two dollar, you know, watermelons, oh, fresh. Oh, real fresh, right out of the ground. Oh, $5 off for oranges. Yeah, like, he really liked that. I mean, I can relate to that as well. When I was a little kid, uh, we used to live in a place in Sydney called Bankstown. And every time we used to go shopping at the Bankstown Shopping Centre, there was this guy who I used to call Master, actually. He, he He worked for like a butcher shop. And every day he'd have a microphone. And every day... Um, when I'd walk past the butcher shop, he was always in front of the butcher store with a microphone, just, you know, yelling at everyone like, oh my God, fresh, fresh meat guys, come and buy fresh meat. And I used to copy him all the time at home. So <laughs> as a kid, that's what you do, right? You just take in what's around you. And Mengxius did the same thing. He started taking an interest in the markets that were around him. He was just fascinated by all the merchants screaming out on the top of their lungs as they tried to sell their products to the customers. And he'd watch them make sales. And he started copying the salesman. Like, yeah. And then when Meng Mu one day was at home, she, she caught her son just pretending to be a merchant, pretending to be a salesman. You know, imagine this little kid going, fresh fruits for sale, fresh fruits for discount, grapes, strawberries, apples, pears. And when her mom saw this, she was like, what the? <laughs> you, you trying to be a salesman now? What the? No, 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 no. Son, you can't do this. That That is not a good job. And you know what? She was probably going on the lines of, I don't want my son to be a sleazy salesman or something like that. And it was true. Like in ancient China, merchants weren't a really desirable job. And they were looked down upon um, by the public. So being the Asian mum she was, she refused to allow her son to fall into the trap to become a salesman ugh, when he grew up. So one day she was like, Guess we got to do it again. Son, pack your bags. We're leaving. Mengxius was confused. What? Why, mum? This place is awesome. Why do we have to move again? I love being around the markets. Mum replied, I just don't want you becoming a salesperson, all right? All I see you do is copy those merchants yelling, two dollar, two dollar, oranges. Why the heck would I want you to do something like that when you get older? But, but, mum... Nah, nah, just shut up and pack your things. We're going. I understand the little boy's frustration. When I was young, our family moved a couple of times as well, and it was so annoying. Like, not to mention the fact that it's a hassle to pack things in boxes, lug it to your new home and unpack and all that stuff. You have to go to a new school, make new friends, and basically start things all over again. So yeah, I feel... I feel Mengxius' pain of having to move over and over again. So would their next move be third time lucky for them? Will his mum finally be satisfied with the next place they'll be moving to? They decided that the third place they would move to would be next to a school. This proved to be just what Mengmu needed. Her son, seeing the students were all studying earnestly next to his house, began to develop a passion on studying this time. He was next to a school. Like, he was like, oh my... Mencius was like, excited. It was like a little Matilda. Going, oh, what are all these kids doing? I want to do this as well. I want to read some books. I want to start learning, 
you know, Chinese and all that stuff. And so Meng Mu was really happy seeing that her son was really studious, enrolled him into the school, and he began studying earnestly with his new friends. And so there you have it. That's And then, you know, the rest is history. Mengxius eventually grew up to become one of the most famous Chinese and East Asian philosophers. And you know who we need to thank? Yeah, his mom for moving all those times so he could study at school and become famous and become the man he would be in the future. Let's think about it. If his mom didn't move, he could have still been famous, right? He could, he could have been the most famous ancient Chinese mourner or the most famous ancient Chinese fruit seller, but, but history doesn't record those stories, right? So yeah, that's it. That's the story of the famous Meng Mu San Qian or Mengxius's mom moves three times. And Meng Mu San Qian has actually become a famous saying that's been passed down to modern times. It emphasizes the importance of parenting for a child and also shows how important the Chinese people place on education for their children. So now when you look at Chinese parents wanting to move near places with good schools, you can sort of understand why, right? Like all the way from ancient times, you've already got this story where a mother is moving all the time just so her child can be influenced by something positive. And they decided that moving him next to a school would mean he would study and become a very knowledgeable, well-respected and famous person later on in life. But yeah, I mean, if that trend goes along, what if I move my house next to a football field? Maybe my child will grow up to become a Ooh, football player, famous football player. <laughs> I hope that's true. <laughs> anyway, that was the end of the story. Yep, yeah, it was just a short episode today, but I just wanted to share with you this interesting and cool story. Um, I got to go now too. I'm going to think about where I'm going to move my next house, probably next to a football field. But yeah, um, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast and follow my Instagram and contact me for topic suggestions, feedback, or just general words of encouragement. Details will be in the description box below. All right, time for me to go now. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time on the Bamboo History Podcast. Bye for now.